But I just can't stress enough how everything that's been going on right now is an advertisement for Bitcoin. And I mean, really seriously at this point, unless there's a straight up Bitcoin ban, how much more FUD? We had Terra Luna, we had Celsius, we had FTX, we have the crypto banking contagion, we have the SEC clamping down on everyone and their mother, yeah. and yet Bitcoin is putting in higher hops. What's going on guys? K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you've been having a great week. Hope you've been enjoying this Bitcoin pump. Bitcoin still hanging out above that $30,000 level. Now it has dipped below it a little bit over the past few days, but everyone is feeling quite optimistic. Now there is a lot we need to talk about with the Bitcoin price because of course there is always that chance of some form of a pullback, but I do want to show you something that Bitcoin is doing right now. It is mimicking previous cycles almost exactly. And there is one Bitcoin metric that has literally never failed in the history of Bitcoin. It's not the super guppy. It's something else. And I want to talk about that right now. Also, the fact that U.S. banks have actually recently seen one of the largest monthly withdrawals in banking history. This is crazy, something we've never seen before. Is this just an advertisement for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies moving forward? You may also be asking yourself, why is the FTX token FTT up 70% today, 100% in the past two days? Well, it's because apparently they're thinking about reopening the exchange. Let me know if you guys would actually be interested in using that, but Aside from the FTX news, there is some big, 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 big news for cryptocurrencies across the board, specifically coming out of Elon Musk and Twitter's mouth. So we're going to talk about all that today. If that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you are not subscribed, get subscribed. And today's video is going to be a little bit quicker only because I am going to be at NFT NYC. Maybe you guys will be there. Maybe we'll catch up. So without a doubt, let's figure it out. Let's look at the charts. And as you guys can see right here, boom, we were having this consolidation. We knew that these patterns usually break, you know, somewhere around 60 to 70%. That's why we didn't get all the way to the end. Very rarely does the market actually get what they're waiting for. And boom, we did have that move. Now, of course, we have hit one of the most critical levels for Bitcoin. We have had this chart drawn for months and months and months. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, Channel. You're just seeing this for the first time. Everybody watching Crypto Zombie knew this. We all we, we knew that this was coming. We knew the significance of these levels, right? We had this bounce right off here. We said we got back into the blue zone. We had the Terra Luna crash acting as resistance, acting as resistance. As soon as we broke through it, we knew that we were most likely headed to around 31,000, which we did. Well, I think on some exchanges we got there, really the level's around 30,988, give or take. But obviously, you can see right here, we are getting, you know, we are hitting some resistance. So the one thing that I have said could be a possibility if, you know, if we don't continue to the upside is just simply to retest this line one more time for confirmation because we've only had resistances. We've never had the support tested, right? So it wouldn't be impossible, and I'm just throwing this out there, for Bitcoin to come down and retest right here again around that $25,100, $25,300 level, right? Now, of course, we could have, you know, one of those wicks where you just wick below it. Although I would say that the weekly candle will most likely probably close above that, right? Of course, we do have a little bit potential more room to the upside. We are seeing all of these indicators that we use showing us that we have that momentum, right? And of course, the big one, the big one that we mentioned right here was we finally got this blue arrow, which basically means we're switching out of the red. You can see we got it right here. We got it right here and we are getting it again right here. So that is obviously showing us that this actually could literally be based on historical indications, the actual bottom for Bitcoin. Now, if you do look, if, if there is a little bit more room of getting overheated to the upside, there is that area at around $32,000. You can see this blue box territory, but at that point, you're seriously, seriously testing the solid body candles. And I would honestly say that we would get some form of a pullback, like a 20%, 30% pullback. So if we get up to around $32,000, I'm not telling you to short Bitcoin. I don't give financial advice like that, but I would assume that you would potentially see selling and shorting going on, at least to maybe retest the $25,000 level, right? 
Interestingly enough, gold finally attempting to have its breakout, but it seems like Bitcoin was actually leading gold this time, and the dollar is now pushing down on this extremely critical level here, right? This white area right around almost 100 even, and you know, you could see that the dollar may end up breaking down and attempting to maybe, you know, get back on this upwards trend. The question is from that point, do we break down even further or do we have that that uh, you know move to the upside? But as we know, there's always that inverse correlation. So, you know, you're seeing gold move up slightly, you're seeing the dollar move down, therefore it's creating a better environment for Bitcoin, right? That's just how we see it. Now, look at this. Like Nick Gurley pointed out, US banks have lost nearly 400 billion dollars in deposits in just a month's time. This is the biggest monthly loss in deposits in US history. He says this data shows the gravity of the banking crisis and why the government acted so quick to bail out depositors. Trouble is, I'm not sure that they fixed the problem. And it's very interesting how during a time of seeing banks collapse and seeing the largest monthly loss in deposits in US history, I mean, you could see how insane this, this looks, and yet Bitcoin still continues to move to the upside, right? And we knew that at some point, we didn't know when, we used to talk about this in 2017, 2018, right? We knew at some point the world was going to begin to wake up to this. Now, there was a survey that came out, which I'll show you in a minute, that says that some investors are still very scared, right, of crypto. Fair enough, FTX, lots of things. But I think the world in general is waking up to the power of decentralization in cryptocurrency as the trust begins to erode from these bankers and institutions, right? So getting back to Bitcoin, what do we got here? Well, if you guys follow Charles Edwards from Capriol Investments, I genuinely enjoy his commentary and charts. And he points out that every time the Bitcoin price has hit its electrical cost in the past, it has been a generational investment opportunity without fail. This is by far the most trusted long-term Bitcoin metric because of this. And obviously you can see we've already hit that area, not to mention the fact, and we'll get to the similarities in a minute, but Bitcoin is trading at a 33% discount to its fair value, pointing out how this area right here is similar to this area right here. So buying Bitcoin, you know, even at these levels, even at 30,000, which seems crazy, right, is arguably the same thing as buying Bitcoin right here at around 6,000, right? So it had doubled from its bottom, right? Bitcoin came down to about 3,000, pumped up to about six. Bitcoin was down at around 15.5, pumped up to around 30, right? Almost double, almost, right? Striking similarities, and yet it's still below the level, way below the level, actually. So looking at the past performances, and this is a chart from Glassnode. I don't know if I'm blocking some of it right here. I'll just kind of get out of the way. But if you guys could see right here, you don't really need to see this part up behind me, but really what we're looking at is the similarities of the structure and the four-year cycle. Now, I've been a believer in the four-year cycle for a very, very long time, and I am going to be the first to admit that I did kind of get sucked into that super cycle narrative, right? Everyone was talking about it. It looked like it might have happened. Maybe it still will happen. Maybe this is the beginning of the super cycle, right? I don't know, but last one clearly wasn't, right? Because we actually went into the typical bear and it did exactly what we had thought the four-year cycle would have done anyway. Now, hindsight being 2020, we actually have confirmation on the four-year cycle theory, um, which we've always talked about, but now it looks like it could play out again, right? And you can see right here, the green represents where we are right now. And every single time we had that bottom. Now, if you want to see where we ended up going from these points, right? Keep in mind, the green is now, right? Basically, you can kind of tell that as the lines are getting lower, the diminishing returns. But if we have a look at where we went from that area, you know, obviously blast off to the moon 2011 to 2013. Then we have the red 2013 to 2017, you know, obviously higher. And then 2017 to 2021, obviously a little bit lower. So, I mean, you know, just looking at where this would go right here, it probably would put us somewhere a little bit down here, you know, diminishing returns. But nevertheless, we are at the point in the cycle where, historically speaking, usually you start seeing the gas, you know, get laid down on, right? You start seeing that momentum to the upside. So, again, it's not saying that we can't have that pullback. I think we're going to have a pullback. I don't want to ruin anybody's day. I think you know, right around that 32,000. I mean, we're getting overheated right now. We truly are. Um, so yes, but I still think we're going up, 
Like, I, I don't think we're going to fall any lower than like 23, only because there's a little gap down there. We might not even fill it this time, right? Because it was so close to the original. But I did want to point out what Clarify Capital was saying. Um, this is in one of their uh, Catching the Eye of Investors. So they interviewed 253 investors. I don't know too much about Clarify Capital. I don't know what their target audience is. So do take that with a grain of salt. Scrolling down here, they got all this data, all this data. But right here, you see they talk about industries that people are looking to invest in. Technology, AI, medical, and healthcare are some of the highest. And places where they're looking to uh, avoid in 2023, well, I think you guys can see right here, 52% cryptocurrency. Again, I don't know the source of them. I'm just pointing out that this does show that there is at least a group of people that are very scared of cryptocurrency. And a lot of it has to do with things like FTX. Now, speaking about FTX, again, why has the token pumped 70%, 100% in two days? Well, it's because they're looking to reboot their platform amid reports that the bankruptcy team has managed to stabilize the situation and recover a huge portion of the missing assets, around $7.3 billion in cash and an $800 million increase from the last report. So there was an attorney that said uh, at a bankruptcy court hearing in Delaware that the company is starting to think about pushing forward with an effort to restart the exchange. He says the situation has stabilized and the dumpster fire is out. Let me know what you think about this. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe they can get some new. I mean, I hope that they make investors whole. I hope they do the right thing. They should pay back the people that lost money. That they should do. As far as reopening, I don't know. Who's going to, you know what? There would probably be people crazy enough. I mean, maybe, would they ever make the same mistake twice? No, I, I don't think they would. Um, but for me, I think it's kind of like a, a name that's been pretty tarnished at this point. I would just, I don't know. Let me know. Would you use the new FTX? Maybe you would. Maybe you wouldn't care. Um, so here's the big news from Twitter. Twitter has partnered with eToro to allow its users access to stocks, cryptocurrencies, and other financial assets. So according to the report, the new feature is going to be rolled out today. So today it's going to happen. At some point on Twitter, it's happening. And... According to eToro's founder, there is a very high quality content, real-time content uh, on financial analysis of companies that's happening around the world. We believe that this partnership will enable us to reach those new audiences, connect better brands with Twitter and eToro. So a lot of people have suspected that Elon Musk was going to integrate cryptocurrencies into Twitter at some point. How is this going to officially affect it? I don't know. This is just sort of, I mean, it's literally day one, Okay. But huge step moving forward, I would imagine that if this does turn out to be successful in some capacity, that we could see the features, the usage, and yeah, just a lot of things really increase forward. So it is all about adoption, right? It is all about, uh, you know, just getting it out there. And Elon Musk, even though he has said some negative things about Bitcoin, ultimately, I'd say he is on the side of crypto. So again, CBBI historical chart only at around 28 right now, the percentage is still quite low. Um, which is really saying that again, you know, if you buy now, could the price go down over the next few weeks, few months? Of course, but it is suggesting that still long term, we are in that good buy zone. So if you guys uh, are interested, uh, uh, tomorrow, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get a video out or not. Uh, I'll be in NFT NYC. It is happening literally right now. It started yesterday. So yeah, that's where I'll be. And um, maybe I'll see you guys there. Maybe I won't. So that's it. And of course, we do have the Miami conference coming up, which I'll talk about in a bit. That's always one of my favorites. But for now, guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. Let me know. How are you feeling? Bullish, bearish, short-term bullish, short-term bearish, neutral, who cares, DCA, HODL, I don't know. Let me know how you're feeling, guys. It's nice to see Bitcoin doing what Bitcoin is supposed to be doing and sort of acting as that inflation hedge, sort of acting as that safe haven hedge during a time of uh, a lot of uncertainty, especially with the banks. So thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. You're the reason that I make these videos. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.